Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. It was a rather eventful weekend and last Friday we talked about Xbox closing the Bethesda acquisition. There was some significant findings that the European Commission's antitrust regulators approved the acquisition which made me pretty confident that it was a wrap. We really just had to wait for confirmation after that and we did get that confirmation today. This is a monumental step for Xbox in acquiring Zenimax, and now we need some long-awaited answers. And while thanks to an insider we may know exactly as to when, Microsoft will talk about what's up with Bethesda. That's not all though because it sounds like Xbox has some big plans for 2021 that could end up surprising some people. So stick around for all that and we will talk about Xbox later in the video. Now we also got some new information on the Nintendo Switch Pro and not everybody is going to be thrilled about this, and I'll explain exactly why that is. With that said, we have a lot of stuff to talk about today, so let's get right into it, starting off with Elite Game, or technically, 3. So this doesn't seem to be getting much coverage so far, but 2021 is Tomb Raider's 25th anniversary. They did reveal a mobile Tomb Raider game not long ago, and they kind of alluded to having some other plans for this year, but as to what these plans are, still remains to be seen. Well, thanks to the Microsoft Store, some of these plans have leaked out ahead of time. I don't know what it is about the Microsoft Store, but they do this quite a bit where they mistakenly put out a store page for a game that has yet to be officially announced. They might want to get that fixed up and everything, but this time it's for the Tomb Raider rebooted trilogy. Supposedly it will be available on March 18th, but keep in mind this could just be a placeholder. We'll need confirmation on all that, but if it is the 18th, we should expect an official announcement to be imminent. What's weird about this store listing though, is that it doesn't mention any kind of next generation features. It does say it will support 4K Ultra HD, and then it has HDR10, but there is no mention of any kind of next generation feature. If that's true, that is incredibly disappointing. I think these games are amazing to be honest with you, and they're very pretty games, but to just release a trilogy without doing much of anything to it seems odd to say the least. You would think if they're going to do a bundle, they would at least unlock the frame rate to get it running at 4K at 60 frames per second, but right now it appears it's basically just going to be the same trilogy, just bundled all together. I really think these games are deserving of some next generation enhancements, but we'll see what happens with all that. Maybe they do have some plans to do all that, so we need to wait for an official confirmation. Now that's not the only game that's being heavily speculated on right now, and that's because Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD for the Switch and PS4 got raided by ESRB. That suggests that a release date is right around the corner for Nocturne. A lot of the times when you see a game get raided there is an official announcement that follows shortly after, and we can only really hope with Nocturne HD. This is a great JRPG that I think a lot of people haven't really tried before. The original released way back in 2003 for the PlayStation 2, and at the time the Shin Megami franchise wasn't nearly as recognized as what it is now. With Persona kinda taking the world by storm, especially with Persona 5 selling millions of copies, there has been more eyes on the mainline franchise as well. And that's the thing, Nocturne is debatably the best in the franchise. So this is a high quality re-release coming, and from the sounds of it, it's coming sooner rather than later. If you really think about it though, the Switch has had a great year in terms of JRPG so far. Bravely Default 2 just released, which was absolutely excellent, I highly recommend that game, definitely go check it out. They also have Neo The World Ends With You, and that's coming sometime this summer, and then you have Nocturne HD. That's a good lineup of games if you do like JRPGs. As for Nocturne though, now we just need to wait for an official release date and that does appear to be coming rather soon. And actually, speaking of JRPGs, Monster Hunter Stories 2 got an official release date. It got a new trailer that you should definitely check out. It looks pretty good from what I've seen so far, but there was a surprise waiting right at the end. Monster Hunter Stories 2 will not only be coming to the Switch, but it will also be available on Steam, and that's pretty awesome. I know there's a lot of Monster Hunter fans on Steam, so to see Monster Hunter Stories come over to Steam is a very welcome addition. And something I like about this release is that this spinoff has a real chance this time. The first Monster Hunter Stories released exclusively for the 3DS, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. 
It was a good game, but a lot of the excitement for the 3DS was gone around when it released, as much of the Nintendo fanbase moved on over to the Switch at the time. And I think for that reason, a lot of fans skipped out on Monster Hunter Stories, and that really is too bad. Again, it was a good game. It has some similarities with the Pokemon franchise, but in the Monster Hunter world instead. It's an odd combination that works surprisingly well. Now, Capcom did eventually bring Monster Hunter Stories to mobile devices, but you know, that's not exactly what hardcore fans necessarily wanted. The original was always a game that probably would have had much more success if it released on the Switch, and this time we're going to see that with the sequel. It's going to get a legit chance at showing fans as to how good it truly is. You're going to be able to play it on the Switch or on Steam starting July 9th. The big thing with Nintendo here recently, though, has been all the reports of the Nintendo Switch Pro. We talked about this last week as Bloomberg reported, Nintendo was set to reveal a Switch Pro in 2021 and should be available by this holiday. It's currently believed to have a 7-inch OLED screen with 720p resolution in handheld mode with 4K resolution output in docked mode. Yeah, all of this sounds absolutely fantastic on paper. I'm especially excited about the OLED screen myself, but Nintendo has always kind of marched to their own beat. They don't always do what you think they will, and they do have a tendency of making some weird decisions. I mean, I love Nintendo and everything, and their games, but they do make some odd decisions from time to time. Well, insider Nate Drake, which leaked Switch Pro information before that Bloomberg report, is claiming that the Switch Pro will have exclusive games. Now, he says he doesn't know as to how many, but he does know of at least one. So what this means is that the Switch Pro could end up having games that cannot run on the original Switch, and that's going to have some fans upset if that ends up being true, especially, I mean, can you imagine if there's a big game like Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 exclusive for the Switch Pro? Now, I'm not saying that will happen or anything, and it's very doubtful, but if something like that were to happen, the internet would absolutely explode. But the thing is, this is not the first time Nintendo has done something like this. In fact, when Nintendo released the new 3DS XL and the new 2DS XL, they had some exclusive games that were not available on the original 3DS. It wasn't necessarily very many, but this was a thing. Xenoblade Chronicles ended up being a new 3DS XL exclusive, and then there was the Virtual Console and a few other games. I think the Virtual Console was probably the most impactful, or at least for me personally, that was a really nice addition that was included. I think what Nintendo is doing here is that they're giving developers the option to do exclusives if they want. I mean, maybe they don't want to go with, you know, a lesser power machine, but I would imagine it will be pretty rare, much like what happened with the 3DS. There's just too many Switch consoles out there in the wild to simply ignore them. So, you know, we might see a few exclusives here and there. I wouldn't rule that out just yet because we have seen Nintendo do that before, but keep in mind this is just a rumor for the time being. With that said, I would like to ask you, what would you think if Nintendo really did make exclusives for an upgraded Switch? I'm personally not a big fan of that myself, and hopefully it doesn't become a thing, but we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what your thoughts are though in the comments below. Now let's move on over to the Xbox news because we do have a lot to cover today. Now quite a few things are coming out over at Xbox. The European Commission's antitrust regulators have officially approved the Bethesda acquisition. I know there was that concern there for a while that maybe they would decide against it, but they did indeed pass it. This was the biggest hurdle for Xbox, but now it should be clear to go. The Bethesda acquisition will absolutely happen. It's only a matter of time now before we get an official update and a celebration from Xbox on completing the acquisition. How soon should we expect that though? Well, actually, it sounds like it will be very soon, as in this week. The well-respected VentureBeat journalist Jeff Grubb is alluding to some kind of an update on March 11th, this Thursday. So there you have it, and Jeff Grubb over the last year has leaked out a lot of information like this ahead of time, very accurately I must say. So there is a reason to believe this will happen this week. March 11th very well could be the place where we finally get some concrete details on what's happening with Xbox and Bethesda. I know everybody wants to know if Bethesda games will be exclusive to Xbox or not. We've now speculated on this for around a half a year, and if the acquisition is completed, then they are legally allowed to say if they're exclusive or not. I'm not saying they will absolutely talk about exclusivity just yet, 
but it is possible that they could talk about it as early as this week. Now, I would expect some kind of exclusivity myself as I keep saying it does make the most sense for Xbox. This is the best way to improve their own ecosystem and I just don't agree with the argument that they need to sell more copies for other consoles. You could literally say the exact same thing with any exclusive game ever made, no matter what platform it's exclusive to. The point of exclusives is to bring more people into your own ecosystem, not necessarily to just sell more copies. You have to look at the bigger picture here. So I just don't agree with that debate, but it's always hard to tell what Microsoft will do. And that right there is exactly why there is just so much speculation about what's going to happen. You just never completely know when it comes to Microsoft. And actually about that, one thing fans have been wondering is what is Xbox's plans for 2021? It seems like they haven't really talked too much about this. They just released the Xbox Series, which is a phenomenal console. The Series X is a fantastic piece of hardware with a lot of power. But what about the games? Most of the games that their internal studios are working on seems to be planned for the years following 2021. Now, they do have some third-party exclusives such as the Medium that released a few months ago. I enjoyed that game very much. It's on Xbox Game Pass if you haven't checked that one out. They also have Gunk, Stalker 2, and some games like that. But when it comes to first-party games, they have Halo Infinite and Flight Sim for 2021 that's already been announced. Is that really all there is, though? Well, Jason Ronald, director of Xbox programming, is teasing that Xbox has unannounced games planned for 2021. He was on Iron Lord's podcast where he was asked about his most anticipated game of 2021, and his response was, not all games that are releasing this year have been announced. This alludes to his most anticipated game being an unannounced game. Now, considering he works for Xbox, this has led to a lot of speculation that this means Xbox themselves have some planned unannounced games for 2021. And that's the thing. This is something that I myself have been hearing about for quite a while. This has been making the rounds across the internet well before Jason Ronald teased anything. So there has been some ongoing rumors about this, but the reason we're talking about it today is because he works for Xbox. Now, maybe he's talking about some kind of third party game that Xbox is working with, but if it is a first party game, what could it be? Could it possibly be a new Forza game? I mean, I could very well see a new Forza game releasing sometime in 2021. Could it be something related to Bethesda? There have been some rumors that Starfield could release as early as this holiday. Supposedly, Bethesda is hoping for that, and that would be huge. That would be a big game for Xbox to release this holiday. There's also Wolfenstein, and the countless other games that Zenimax is working on as well. The truth is, there's a lot more possibilities from Xbox Studios than ever before. I mean, Zenimax Studios brings Xbox up to 23 total studios, which is absolutely insane. I mean, several of those studios are working on multiple games, and it's certainly believable that some of those games could release in 2021. Now, whether they're exclusive or not, that still remains to be seen, but Xbox will certainly have a lot more to announce than they have ever had before. Make your predictions in the comments below, though. If Xbox does have some unannounced games for 2021, what do you think they are? And on to our final topic, the poll of the day. Elden Ring footage leaked online last week, and there's been a ton of anticipation for this game. This is from Software's next game, the studio behind Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. They are absolutely one of the best studios out there right now, and the author of Song of Ice and Fire, aka Game of Thrones, has collaborated in some form with this game as well. Yeah, there is a lot of anticipation for this game, and it reached a new boiling point last week as fans went crazy over Blurry League footage. It did look really good though in my opinion. However, there has been a rumor that Elden Ring will not release in 2021. This would be yet another internal delay if it ends up being true, but understandable considering how work conditions are currently. And I mean, if you're a George R.R. Martin fan, you're kind of used to these delays to be honest. But I wanted to ask you all if you thought Elden Ring would release in 2021, and you all do not seem hopeful about this at all. 75% of you said no. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more optimism here because I'm really looking forward to this game myself. As Lion Zolkover said in the comments, the hardest soul game is waiting for Elden Ring. And you know what? Lion makes a good point. This wait has been rather difficult. At the very least, 
I hope we get a legit trailer of Elden Ring soon. We really need a new one, so hopefully we hear something about this game sooner rather than later. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.